Now, we recently crossed the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. In that time, Ukraine has exacted an extraordinary toll on Russian forces in no small part due to the aid that the U.S. has been sending to Ukraine. In that time, we've sent almost $50 billion to Ukraine, about half of that for security assistance. Also in that time, the public support for aid to Ukraine has shifted. So we sent our Huckabee correspondent, Rick Roberts, right into downtown Nashville to ask some folks what their thoughts were on the issue. How do you feel about the United States sending aid to Ukraine? I have mixed feelings about it. We support the people of the Ukraine and their quest for democracy. It's just tough to overlook when Russia invades a foreign country. You know, I think they need to take care of they, this land first before they look out for any other lands. That's the problem now. Send them as much as they need, you know? They're doing all work. They're killing commies, it's good. Uh, I prefer they spend the money here in the U.S., especially on the Ohio train ram and things like that. I do believe we need to send aid to the Ukraine. I believe we need to stand up against Putin and just help them out. We don't have enough money here, it seems like, to take care of what we need to here. It seems like our priorities are mixed up. I think it's a good cause, yeah, to save our democracy and theirs, so. We are humans and we're supposed to help each other, but uh, at the same time, uh, we have to see how that is affecting us. But we're always helping. We're always going to help everyone else. Everyone always comes to the United States for the assistance, whatever it is. So, okay, so be it. What are we going to do about it? It's what we do. It's who we are. So it's all good. <laughs> this is Rick Roberts on the streets of Nashville, Tennessee, reporting for Huckabee. Well, thank you very much, Rick. Some great insights from real people in downtown Nashville. By the way, be sure to check out Rick Roberts' comedy and more online. We have a direct connection to you at Huckabee.tv. Well, for more insight on this topic, we've got Rebecca Koffler with us. She's a former U.S. intelligence official, born in the Soviet Union, and considered one of the foremost experts on Russian military strategy. The war in Ukraine, well, it drags on, and Russian President Vladimir Putin he just doesn't show any sign of backing down. So we're going to ask Rebecca what she thinks about the way the U.S. is going about this whole thing. Welcome back to the show, Rebecca Koffler. Rebecca, great <laughs> having you back. <laughs> <laughs> President Biden, he just got back from Ukraine. Yes. Um, did anything significant get accomplished by his being there, having the conversation with President Zelensky? What do you think? Nothing really got uh, accomplished. Yes, he had a photo op, right? He wants to show to Zelensky, to the Ukrainian people, who, by the way, have fought valiantly. Yes, they have. Um, but in terms of practical impact, no, Putin is not afraid of uh, words. Putin is not afraid of all these various threats that President Biden has done. Putin is afraid of real action. And unfortunately, President Biden lacks strategy to win. He keeps throwing mindlessly money and weaponry, thinking that if, if he sucks the American taxpayer dry, the problem's gonna go away. But no, weapons and technology don't win wars. Strategy does, and so, we don't have one. And so what would be the strategy that we should be employing? Because I heard a general today, and, and I, I thought the follow-up question was begging to be asked, but it didn't get asked. And the general, a very respected guy, um, made the comment, he said that we're gonna be in a permanent war this is not going to end anytime soon, and it is not going to end well if it ends at all. And he said, we're doing the wrong thing. And I was waiting for the reporter to say, so what's the right thing? They never <laughs> asked the question. So I'm going to ask you, is there an exit from this? How does this end? Well, the general with whom you spoke, I agree with him. Unless some cooler heads prevail right now in the Biden administration and in the Pentagon, and they start putting pressure on Zelensky to accept reality and to accept the terms. This war is going to go when you When you say the terms, what kind of terms would Zelensky have to accept for it to end? And would Putin end it? Because he seems to have his ambition to rebuild the old Soviet Union. He does have that ambition, but he is not having any ambition to secure the entire control 
of Ukraine, look, the Russian military has exhibited tremendous tactical incompetence, right? Yeah. So their typical strategy is to outsuffer and outlast the adversary. It, it is called the meat grinder. They keep throwing uh, bodies in. So, and he can go forever, like you said, because Ukraine's population is 43 million, the Russian population 143, the Russians lost 25 million people. So throwing flesh at the problem is not an issue for them. So the, the terms that my intelligence analysis tells me that Putin would accept, but Zelensky is not willing to, is to keep the 20% um, uh, of the territory that the Russian forces have already uh, captured plus Crimea and have the West recognize it, which we never would because that just really shows Putin that, that he won. And that's the conundrum. But in reality, Ukraine is a buffer state uh, governor. We, the United States and NATO, we want to use Ukraine to protect us from the Russian threat, and the Russians want to use Ukraine to protect themselves. But the truth is, is that various people, including the Biden administration, they're worried about Putin going after Poland. And how in the world, it's nonsensical. Putin uh, is not gonna, he's not suicidal, right? Because going after Poland is gonna trigger Article 5, right? Yeah. That we can obliterate Russia in like two days. So it's nonsensical, to, Putin has no claims on Poland. You know, if, if that continues, um, the big question is, what happens if Putin disappears? Does this end then because there's nobody in Russia that wants to push it like he has? Unfortunately, no. Uh, Governor Putin did not uh, devise this whole strategy by himself. He has an entire regime and apparatus that has spent 10 years developing the strategy. There's a person who is Nikolai Patrushev, who is the head of Russia's Security Council, who would at least temporarily step in. And then another possibly even worse dictator would come. This is just how uh, the Russian government works, right? Um, it, it's not going to solve the problem. We have have a Russia problem that needs to be managed and Putin needs to be dealt with on a transactional basis, not like moral lecturing and not like pleading with him, but purely transactional basis. Well, it's a shame that hasn't been done so far because there's a lot of uh, people who have lost their lives and their limbs and the economies of both countries have suffered dramatically. Rebecca, it's great to have you here. I want to remind everybody her book. We talked about it when she was here before, Putin's Playbook, a real insight into Vladimir Putin from someone who has spent her life as a uh, intelligence analyst looking at Russia and what they do. For our audience, you can get that book, Putin's Playbook Anywhere Books Are Sold, or you can head over to Huckabee.tv where you can also find links to follow Rebecca on social media. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I hope you will now. The button is just below this video and there's a little bell next to it. If you click on those, YouTube will reluctantly start letting you know when we've got a new video uploaded.